Welcome back to the shop. Today we're taking a look at three Jacob style chucks and one of them is hiding a really big problem. We're going to disassemble, clean, deburr, relubricate, and reassemble all three chucks. While we have them open, we'll evaluate their internal machining and then we'll put their accuracy claims to the test. I had originally planned to compare these two precision chucks, a Vertex branded, made in Taiwan model and an unbranded made in China model that was advertised as containing ball bearings. I knew something was amiss when all the listings for the ball bearing China chuck used pictures of one that looked just like this Taiwan made vertex. Both of these claim to be precision chucks and they boast an accuracy of around 3 thou total indicated runout, which is quite good for a value chuck and why I picked these models. What is runout and why do we care? Runout is basically the amount of wobble that occurs when something is spinning like a lathe chuck or a drill bit and it can have a big impact on precision. Here's an exaggerated illustration depicting an extreme amount of runout leading to a loose and sloppy hole. The closer your runout is to zero, the tighter your hole will be. More runout means less accuracy. Testing their accuracy was my primary reason for buying these chucks, but I also wanted to find out if a chuck made in Taiwan is really better than one that's made in China. And yes, I know I could shell out for an Albrecht or a Jacobs Super Chuck, but as a hobbyist, my budget is more Craigslist haggling than McMaster car. I would love to have a snap-on tool card, a thousand dollar tap set, and a high-end CNC machine, but in my shop, my tool cart's from Harbor Freight, my taps are 50 years old, and my CNC machine is a conversion I did myself. And yet somehow, they all still manage to get the job done. I'm not looking for perfection. I am looking for value. So I mentioned comparing a made in China chuck and a made in Taiwan chuck, but the astute among you, those who can count to three, will have noticed this guy. When I first ordered the Taiwan chuck from Amazon, this mystery chuck is what showed up. It came in the right box, but clearly this is not that. If you have any idea what model number this might be, please let me know because I don't have a clue. I was ready to return it, but I decided to to take a closer look and I'm really glad I did because of what I found when I opened it up. Speaking of opening them up, I came across a review for the ball bearing China Chuck that said he took a look inside his and discovered it did not actually contain any ball bearings. I was intrigued by the idea of a ball bearing Chuck with no balls. I ordered mine from Zorro because I'd already had an issue with Amazon sending me the wrong unit and at first I thought that's probably what happened to that guy too. Zorro actually shipped them straight from the distributor HHIP and I'm gonna have a whole lot more to say about HHIP here in just a minute. With all three chucks in hand, I cracked them open on my trusty 20 ton Harbor Freight shop press and that ball bearing chuck? Yeah, the Amazon review guy was absolutely right. Worse yet, the body isn't even machined for them. No balls is a huge problem for a ball bearing chuck, right? The internal machining was not great featuring a rough surface finish and several notable burrs. Strangely, the China-made Chuck's surface finish was almost identical to the Taiwan-made Vertex's surface finish. So close that I would have a hard time believing they didn't come from the same factory, especially when compared to the Mystery Chuck. The machining on the Mystery Chuck told a very different story. Initially, the sleeve was a lot harder to turn than the other two Chucks, and I thought that the machining was going to be trash. But when I looked inside, I found treasure. I wasn't just surprised, I was blown away. This thing was machined so well it looked like it was polished to a mirror finish. It was like discovering the holy grail of chucks compared to the other two. The sleeve was only harder to turn because the sheer amount of grease that they jammed between the jaws and the split nut. The mystery chuck impressed me so much that I'm gonna use it on an upcoming project and here's a sneak peek. It is a completely custom tool holder for the lathe that I'm gonna be using for some very unconventional stock. If that's a video you're interested in seeing, then hit that subscribe button. But really, how much does the interior surface finish matter if it doesn't affect the accuracy? Nobody's gonna see it except people like me and you who crack them open. But still, the stark contrast in machining quality has me very curious to see how the mystery chuck is going to perform versus the two self-proclaimed precision chucks that I have accuracy ratings for. I spent about an hour getting all three chucks disassembled, cleaned up, deburred, lubricated, and reassembled. They can be finicky when you're putting them back together, so I like to make sure the jaws are bottomed out before I put the split nut on, give them a spin to make sure everything is tracking correctly, and once everything is lined up, just press it back together easy peasy. 
If you don't have a hydraulic press, you could use an arbor press or even a bench vise with the right blocking. Look how much better they spin with that heavy grease removed and with a fresh, light coat of grease in its place. It's really night and day. With all the surprises and the machining quality, I was eager to test the accuracy claims to see if these guys would live up to what they promised. Like I said, I don't know the accuracy rating for the mystery chuck, but we're going to test that one too and just see how it does. Now to keep things consistent, I'll be using the same Shars R8 to JT3 Arbor with each chuck, using the same half inch drill bit and chucked up at the same position to test the runout. First up is the China chuck and it's looking really good, around maybe 7 tenths at the most. Next up is the Taiwan chuck, which is also looking really good, around half a thou, which is just a little bit better than the China chuck. And finally we have the mystery chuck, which is doing amazing. Barely any run out at all. It looks like maybe a couple tenths at the most, and this is a pretty good dial indicator. It's a German made, brown and sharp. But I wanted to confirm the accuracy with the indicator I trust the most, so I set my Pittsburgh up and yeah, a couple tenths. Fantastic. All three chucks significantly exceeded my expectations for accuracy. I could not ask for more out of low to mid-range chucks. These are value chucks. Now what am I going to do with three chucks? I could give a chuck. Let me know about your experiences with made in China versus made in Taiwan tools. We do have the mystery chuck, which is clearly machined better than the advertised made in Taiwan and advertised made in China chucks. It makes me wonder if this other made in Taiwan vertex was not actually made in Taiwan. Maybe it was made in China and it was mislabeled or misbranded or something else. I don't know. All right, let's talk about HHIP. They are distributing a chuck advertised as having ball bearings, but it's got no balls. That is chucked up. As soon as I cracked it open and found out that it didn't have any balls, I reached out to them. I was not sure what to expect. Were they even aware of this problem? Had they done anything about it? Honestly, I didn't even expect to hear anything back at all. But to my surprise, I got a response the very first thing the next morning. Not only were they aware, but they thought they had already pulled all of the affected units. They acknowledged having inadvertently missed some of the size and taper combinations and were very apologetic. They wanted to make it right. I don't have any affiliation with HHIP, but I have to give credit where it's due. They didn't try to shirk responsibility. They took ownership and they went above and beyond. After years of working in e-commerce personally, I know problems happen. It could be the supply chain, it could be the warehouse, the shipping department. You can't move a lot of product without making an occasional mistake. It's how you deal with those mistakes that determines whether you get to keep my business or not. And HHIP is going to keep my business. For my trouble, they offered to make it right by sending me any tool in their catalog, up to 150% of what I paid for the unit. They said I could keep it or return it for a full refund. The ER40 collet block set arrived and looks great. I do wish I had been able to evaluate and test a China-made ball bearing chuck, but I'm incredibly happy with the precision I got from all three chucks. Balls or no balls. Let me know in the comments if you've had any issues with HHIP tools or if you've had one of these chucks that it come with or without balls. And if you haven't checked, you just might want to take a peek. If you found this video interesting or helpful, please like and subscribe. It really makes a huge difference. All the links to support the shop are down in the description. If you'd like to see a deep dive video into the teardown, cleaning, deburring, and general maintenance I did on these chucks, click right here. I'll see you next time.